in chronological order. This is the second Transformers movie. I don't know where this whole thing can start, but it ends with him. Hey everybody, Mike here with another edition of Making Sense of Transformers, a series where I talk about various topics within the Transformers movie universe that need a little extra analysis and explanation. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to comment, hit that like button, and subscribe. And don't forget to click that bell to be notified of future uploads. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok to show some extra support and access exclusive content. Now, when Bumblebee was first announced coming off the heels of Transformers The Last Night, it was originally going to be a straight-up prequel to the 2007 film. But somewhere along the line, partly due to the box office woes of The Last Night, it transformed into something different. A reboot, in a way. But yet not. At the same time. Now, years later, we still don't know for sure, which brings us to the current question. Is Transformers Rise of the Beasts a complete reboot, a prequel to the Michael Bay universe, or maybe a little something in between? Let's find out. Honestly, I was a bit hesitant to make this subject matter a Making Sense of Transformers video, because the ultimate conclusion I reach for this theory can very well be proven wrong in less than a month when Rise of the Beast hits theaters. But since this series is all about theories, whether right or wrong, I figured this was a good topic to tackle. 2017 was set to be a big year for Transformers fans. The last two live-action films had crossed a billion dollars at the box office, and The Last Night was set to be a monumental film for the franchise. Not only was it Michael Bay's last Transformers movie, but we would also see the return of familiar faces such as Barricade, Lennox, and Simmons. Even Tyrese Gibson was set to return as Epps until schedule conflicts got in the way. But as I discussed in a previous Making Sense of Transformers video, The Last Night was a financial failure, making about $500 million less than the previous film, Age of Extinction. With the Bumblebee prequel set to release in just a year's time, launching a bunch of spin-offs and sequels as part of a newly established cinematic universe, producers scrambled, disbanding a writer's room and removing Transformers 7 from the schedule, originally set to release in 2019. Bumblebee, however, had already started production, so it continued on. But with the rest of the cinematic universe seemingly cancelled, what was going to happen to this one? Would it launch a rebooted universe? or would it still be considered a prequel as planned? Well, when the first teaser trailer was released in the summer of 2018, we seemingly got our answer as Bernie Mac's quote about a car picking its driver from the 2007 film played as a voiceover at the very beginning. It's a mystical bomb between man and machine. But other fans weren't completely convinced, especially since Bumblebee was smaller and had a bit of a redesign simplified but still keeping remnants of his Bayformer's face. Later, there were even more conflicting vibes as people who attended a test screening of the film claimed there was a shot of Megatron inside Hoover Dam, seemingly lining it up to the 2007 film. However, this Megatron also had a different design, still keeping some elements of the 2007 version, but with a slightly more G1-like appearance, including a helmet, which would cause a bit of a continuity issue. Director Travis Knight later confirmed this was indeed a part of the film until it was later removed. He told Entertainment Weekly, We caught a glimpse of Megatron outside the war room where the Sector 7 guys are wondering what they should do with these Decepticons. There were a couple of shots where we just caught a fleeting glimpse of a frozen Megatron in the background. He realized, though, that too much unexplained mythology might confuse or overwhelm the casual viewer and he didn't want to pause the actual plot to give an adequate explanation. He wanted the movie to work for, quote, someone who didn't know anything about the Transformers so they could sit and enjoy the film and wouldn't be bummed by those dense layers of mythology. You have to make choices in terms of what's more important for the movie. While other elements such as Sector 7, Hoover Dam, and a young agent Seymour Simmons served as connecting tissue to the Bay films, one sequence was not included in the test screening. An opening battle on Cybertron featuring many famous Transformers in G1-styled appearances. 
Knight asked the producers if he could add it to the film just months before release, and they said yes, giving many fans the idea that yes, this is indeed a reboot. However, something interesting to note is that while it contained almost a complete roster of well-known Transformers, Megatron, the Decepticon leader, was surprisingly absent. In his 2018 interview with Entertainment Weekly, Travis Knight addressed this, saying, I had this whole thing but I bored it out myself where I had Megatron in there. We had a new design and a partial build and everything. I was so excited I couldn't wait to do it. But then as we started going through, it was going to be too expensive and really did fly in the face of continuity with the Bay films. But let's be honest, I'm sure they have a fleeting sense of continuity themselves. Thus seemingly confirming that this might be a prequel after all? In an interview with io9, writer Christina Hodson complicated matters even further by saying, I never worried myself with words like prequel or reboot or restart or anything like that. I just tried to look at it as its own thing, because we have the luxury of being back in time. Flash forward to 2019, Hasbro went on to declare Bumblebee as the start of a new storytelling universe at the New York Toy Fair. But what exactly does that mean? A reboot? The beginning of a series of prequels? It's all so confusing, especially when that same year, producer Lorenzo de Bonaventura told Metro, Someone described Bumblebee to me as 99% prequel, 1% not. I was like, what was the 1%? He said, it is the scene where Optimus and all the other guys come to Earth at the end. I was like, that doesn't contradict anything we've said before. Who is to say they haven't been around as robots in disguise since then? A couple years later, in 2021, it was revealed that the next live-action film would be a sequel to Bumblebee, set in the 90s. But with so many conflicting ideas of whether the series was now in prequel or reboot territory, many people were still questioning, what is this movie supposed to be? But things were quiet for a while, that is, until earlier this year when Lorenzo de Bonaventura spoke to Collider and discussed the character arc of Optimus Prime. When we meet him in 2007, he's a particular person, if you would. In 1994, he's not the same person, he still has growth to do between 94 and 2007. And by the end of the movie, Optimus has become the guy that you've recognized from the Bay movies. Emotional. Then he seemed to confirm things even more in an interview with Total Film Magazine, saying, If you said it any time after Michael Bay's movies, you're forced into one reality. It's not easy to juggle the lore of the Bay movies and then somehow insert this other piece into it. Eventually, if we're lucky enough to get there, we're going to be forced to marry them. But for the moment, we don't have to. So that pretty much tells us that the films are still connected, but the studio is kind of scared to set the movies after the last night in the timeline. This was later followed by an interview with Rise of the Beast director Stephen Capel Jr., who told The Hollywood Reporter, It doesn't mess up any of the timeline in 2006-2007, we're actually going in a direction that allows us to protect that side of the universe. But that's all you need to know. Well, that seems to cement the prequel thing, right? Right? Well... Uh. When the second trailer for Rise of the Beast was released in April, we see Unicron. In space. Now why is that interesting? Well, in the last night, if you don't remember, it was established that Unicron is Earth's core. So... Huh? How can this possibly be connected? Now everything up to what I've said in this video to this point comes straight from the people working on these films. But now, it's time for a theory. Judging by Optimus Primal's line about this being the greatest threat Optimus Prime has ever faced from his past or future, we can assume that some type of time travel shenanigans factors into this movie. Now let's combine that information with what we're told in these bio cards posted by the official Transformers social media pages. On Rhinox's card, we're also given a piece of information about time. It says his ultimate purpose is being fiercely loyal and constantly wary of those who would do the Maximals harm, whether they be from either the past or future. Unicron's card also calls him the most omnipotent force in the multiverse and that he's sending the Terracons to retrieve a key that has the power to create a portal in space and time. It's also worth mentioning that there is even an ongoing fan theory that Scourge is actually Optimus Prime from the Michael Bay universe after being corrupted by Unicron, considering they have similar helmet designs and they both transform into Peterbilt trucks. 
While that seems a little far-fetched and potentially too interesting for them to ever think about pulling off, it would be a cool twist, but I do have my doubts. There are really only two ways this film could ever connect to the Bayverse. It either must be revealed that this is an alternate universe parallel to the Bay films caused by time travel, especially since the Autobots were unaware that Unicron was inside Earth in the last night. Or maybe, just maybe, in this movie or a future sequel, Unicron will be sent to the past and eventually turn into Earth without the Autobots knowing, basically causing a paradox. Now remember, director Stephen Capel Jr. said, This movie doesn't mess up any of the timeline in 2007. We're actually going in a direction that allows us to protect that side of the universe. But that's all you need to know. Meaning an actual explanation could end up leading to spoilers. Or it's just going to be a reboot. I guess we'll find out soon enough. To check out my previous episodes of this series, head over to the Making Sense of Transformers playlist on my channel, and make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more Transformers-related content. Signing out, I'm Mike. See you next time.